Turning now to your community focus, you heard her response to the governor's state of the state address last week. Now Senate Minority Leader Jessica De La Cruz joins us live in studio. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So something you mentioned in your response to the governor's address, you said Rhode Islanders need immediate assistance as they struggle with the rising cost of living, inflation. You said your caucus would introduce legislation to require taxpayers, quote, get their money back as they've done in other states. Mm -hmm. What does that look like exactly? Well, if we just look over the board in Massachusetts, I actually have family that live there now, mm -hmm. and um, they received a refund. And it, uh, I, I just don't know, understand why, as Rhode Islanders, we wouldn't be able to get a refund as well when we've been overtaxed. And so I think it's a reasonable measure, and I think a lot of Rhode Islanders are excited about it, and they're like, when, it's, when is it happening? Well, it has to go through the legislature first. So when will you be introducing that legislation, and, and what percentage refund would they get back, or is that still being ironed out? Well, it would be based on what they paid in taxes. So it wouldn't be just a dollar amount or blank amount, uh, I mean um, a generic amount, mm -hmm. but um, it would be based on what they paid in taxes. And so we are currently introducing legislation, but Ledge Council is working as fast as they can. And as soon as we get the legislation to our desk, we can pen our name to it and submit it. I know another big priority for you and your caucus is schools and education. You touched on three things in your speech, uh, proposing potentially all public charter school districts, uh, expanding existing charter schools are creating educational savings accounts for private school enrollment. I know education is also a big priority for Senate President Dominic Ruggiero. Have you run any of these proposals by him? I think we have very different approaches to uh, fixing the education system. I think that parents need to be empowered and they know what's best for their children. Um, and you know, I have three kids of my own and they're you know, very unique and even in their educational needs. And I think that parents need that choice, either if it's a private school, if it's a charter school, or maybe it's another public school in a different community within the radius in which they could be transported, you know, by uh, public transportation. And I mean by, you know, school buses. Sure. Uh, I want to ask you also about, uh, you know, slashing the sales tax. The governor has proposed a 0.15% decrease, potentially continuing that over multiple years. You mentioned in your speech bringing it all the way down to 5% immediately. Mm -hmm. You've also previously previously introduced legislation to suspend the gas tax entirely instead of just freezing it uh, from that three cent increase. But the minority caucus is small. There's only a few Republicans in both chambers. So how do you really move the needle on some of these proposals? Well, I'm going to try to make it real quick, but when it comes to the gas tax, uh, we did want to suspend it completely, and then the governor uh, in his state of the state said three cents per uh, gallon. And when I introduced it, it was kind of scoffed at because 35 cents, what is that? That's five dollars a gallon. Uh, and five dollars a tank. Well, three cents, that's negligible. Like, what are you going to save with three cents a gallon? Um, so, and I would just point to how can Republicans be effective? Well, you know, we were able to secure over a hundred million dollars for the Zambrano Hospital Eleanor Slater system. We also passed a really important piece of legislation protecting children from sexual exploitation. So, even though we're in the minority, we can be effective. I just think it takes a little bit of creativity. All right, Senate Minority Leader Jessica De La Cruz, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. And looking ahead to tomorrow when we will be joined by Dr. Emily Miller from Women and Infants Hospital to talk about postpartum depression and psychosis, the signs, symptoms, and resources available to women. That's all coming up right here tomorrow at 4.